In today's gaming news, the console version of Diablo 3 may be better than its PC counterpart, Defiance launches tomorrow, and Kojima looks to reinvent Metal Gear Solid. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. It is Monday, April 1st, and my name is Force, here with your day's gaming news. Now I know it's April Fool's Day, and I'm sure you guys are expecting a ton of weird jokes from me, but you're not going to get that. The internet's already chock full of stupid jokes for April Fool's, and really I don't feel like putting up with it, so here is the real gaming news for today. First up, I want to point you guys to an article that says Diablo 3 for the console may be better than the PC version. An article on Penny Arcade takes a look at some of the changes and improvements improvements coming to the console version of Diablo 3. This version will support offline play with up to three friends, will not include a real money auction house, and has several gameplay changes made specifically for the platform. Some of those changes include direct character control with a joystick, enemy encounters being redesigned to waves, and an overhaul to the inventory and loot systems. Now this actually doesn't come as much of a surprise. You look at generally Diablo 3 and how it's played, and the idea of taking direct control of a character rather than pointing and clicking to move around, well it makes sense that that could be better. And they're revamping a ton of the systems. Number one, no real money auction house, huzzah, that's a huge improvement. And they're actually completely changing the loot system. They're changing it from tons of stuff dropping and then you sometimes getting a good item, to very few items dropping and everyone that does could potentially be an upgrade. That's a significant overhaul and a, a complete change in design philosophy, and I am going to wonder how that will translate over. Now, I also wonder how PC gamers feel about this, the fact that the console version of Diablo 3 may be better than the one on PC. Next up in news, Defiance will be launching tomorrow, and I'm not quite sure how I feel about this game. Defiance is a third-person MMO shooter that is launching alongside a sci-fi television series of the same name. The game takes place on a transformed version of Earth during an alien invasion and features a massive open world with dynamic events and missions. The show and game are set to play off of each other, with major events in one showing up in the other. Defiance the Game launches tomorrow on 360, PS3, and PC for $59.99. Now I played this game during one of the closed beta events and I have to say I was not impressed. It looks really really crappy to be honest with you. Now I'm going to be giving this game a look tomorrow and I'll give you guys my first impressions and maybe do some follow-up videos later in the week, but unfortunately I'm not expecting much from Defiance and beyond playtesting it, I haven't really heard much about the game. It doesn't seem like there's much excitement or hype for it, but of course that could all change. I mean, what if the television series turns out to be a huge success? If that happens to be the case, then I'm sure lots of people would try the game as well. And last up in news today, Hideo Kojima has given some further details about Metal Gear Solid 5. In an interview with Game Informer, Hideo Kojima cleared up some of the confusion around Metal Gear Solid 5. He said Phantom Pain and Ground Zeroes will be two parts of a whole, and Ground Zeroes will come first. It will kind of be Phantom Pain on a smaller scale. It will be open world but not quite as big, and will allow you to jump in, learn how to sneak in real time, and later on, after players kind of get used to that, then Phantom Pain will come along and they'll be thrown into this huge, gigantic open world. He went on to say that he wants to reinvent the series to be a contender against Western action games. You know, to be honest with you, I'm happy to hear that he's sort of changing the format and trying to reinvent Metal Gear Solid, because I really haven't been into the series since the second one. Now, I absolutely loved the original Metal Gear Solid for PlayStation, and the second one I thought was okay as well, but beyond that, I haven't really played any of those games. And the fact that they're changing this to an open world experience to sort of coincide with today's action games, well, that could be a great thing, or it could be terrible for hardcore Metal Gear Solid fans. Now, what I want to know from you guys today is what do you think about the idea of this change from Metal Gear Solid to a very linear story-driven experience to probably still a story-driven experience but done in more of an open world? Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. All right, guys, that is going to do it for today's episode of the show. As always, thank you so much for watching. Once again, this has been Force, and you have just been Force-fed. Mm -hmm.